Hello guys, today we're going to be working on this Megtag Centennial Top Lock Washer. Welcome to DIY Repair Now. Read all the warnings and during this video you will see one or more of these icons to help you do this repair safe. And the problem that we have with this washing machine is that it's out of balance and it's banging on the sides. We're going to start by removing that screw and removing this other screw that holds this cover now those two screws are holding the uh, top panel and we're going to go ahead and remove those two screws just to be able to access to the drum and lift the top panel once you do that you're going to go ahead and remove the drain hose from the drain line to be able to have more accessibility to pull the washer forward and have access to the back and work more freely a lot of people ask me how to know when the shocks are bad and this is what you're gonna do you're gonna go ahead and open the lid and you're gonna push down if it bounces more than once that means the shocks have to be replaced here's in a slow motion as you see it bounced more than once and that's when you know it needs to be replaced if it only bounce once that means the shocks are fine now this is a little tricky you have to pull this top forwards towards you grab it from the middle lift up a little bit push back to be able to go above those little clamps and then it will lift up if you have to listen to that just go back on the video remember you have to you know lift up a little and then push back and then it will release the top panel the same way here's the, again the test and as you see it's bouncing more than once so we already know that this washer is out of balance because of that there's the part number for the shocks and here we have the shocks with all the parts that needs to be installed once you do that you're going to go ahead and tape this top uh, panel the lid because this lid will bounce on you and it can hurt your head or something so go ahead and secure it with duct tape or silver tape or any kind of tape sometimes i use even electrical tape as you see i'm doing it again i just go ahead and pull forward up and then it releases from those clamps now we're going to go ahead and start grabbing this um, shocks be careful with sharp edges go ahead and use long leaves um, shirts to be able to do this repair and gloves now this is a bad example in how you shouldn't do it because if you grab this and it come loose it can literally cut your finger but i'm going to go ahead and show you the right way to do it in another example i'm just doing this to show you guys the uh, a way that you should not be doing this uh, shocks however you know I do this pretty much every day and I know what I'm doing so that's the reason why I did it you can grab it from with your hand now if it's too heavy go ahead and use some pliers and put them inside but I'm gonna go ahead and show you a trick that I found very useful also go ahead and remove those rings because it comes um, it brings some new ones in the box as you see right there and go ahead and replace them for the new ones even if they look good go ahead and put the new ones you want to go ahead and put everything that comes in a box now we're gonna get to the bottom and go ahead and start removing this old shocks again a lot of people will say well the shocks looks good and looks just like the new ones and they're always gonna look good you know but that doesn't mean they're good that means they are weak if you put pressure on the new ones compared to the used ones you will see what i'm talking about but again even if they look good that doesn't mean they're good you will see when you install the new ones if you press it down it's supposed to it's supposed to only bounce once and that's how you install the shocks there's the two the front two shocks and this is what I'm talking about. You can do it this way uh, by putting the vice grips on the on the inside and with the other hand. But then I find this trick that is more 
useful and saved at the same time and like i said you know i have a couple of videos in how, how to install the new shocks which are the most popular video on my channel but i always looking for ways to do this repair more safe for you guys and remember the way you see um that this shocks are in place that that's the way you have to do it because if you put it in the wrong place it can be shaky after you put the new shocks so this is the second one for the front and then next we're going to go ahead and do the ones in the back again this is the way i do it and i really believe this is the most safe way that i found to do this repair and also you know some of the uh, drums are not are not that heavy but in this case this one and because it's a centennial and is a super capacity it was heavy so i end up doing this trick with a metal wire now this is the one for the back that's how you remove it and yes like i said be careful because this um, washer cabinet is very sharp and you can cut your hands or your arms so like i said wear a uh, long sleeve shirt and gloves to be able to do this repair safe a lot of people say well you don't do it yeah because i do this every day you know and, and i need to keep going with my day so that will answer your question i'm very used to it but the first times i start doing this repair i uh made a lot of mistakes and i don't want you guys to go through that that is the reason for this video also some people disconnect the water hoses but that can backfire because sometimes when you close the water valves they don't open back up so i try to do this repair in place with the water lines hooked up but that can be a little dangerous you need to clean the washer in a cabinet or something or have somebody hold the washer while you replace the shocks now i'm doing the, the two in the back as you can tell and when you put this part of the shocks, they, it will be like a black ring that it clamps in place. In this particular model, not all of them brings that, but you get the idea. Now I'm installing the two shocks in the back. And as you see, it has his way to be able to install them too. You can go to the settings on your YouTube account and put the video in slow motion if you want to see with details how and in what position do I place this part of the shock. Again, it has to be in a certain position to be able to work right. But again, this was the safest way to do this repair with this wire. Makes a little bit complicated, but as long as it's safe, that way you don't cut yourself, cut your finger. That's good enough for me. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and remove the tape from the lid. And we're gonna go ahead and put this top panel in place the same way we got it loose. Just, you know, put it down and push it forward and then down again and then will, it will clip in place. I have uh, more videos about the Whirlpool shocks on my channel with more details and how to lift that panel 
So just go in my channel and search for those um, Whirlpool shocks and you will see with more details. In this case, I had the customer talking to me and I couldn't get a lot of details and camera and I couldn't explain in camera too because sometimes you will have the customer on your shoulders or you know right next to you talking to you and you know we do the best we can but this Maytag Centennial is the same uh, it's made by Whirlpool so it will be the same repair in the videos that I have once you put the drain line in place we're just gonna go ahead and put this on spin mode by going one two three one back one forward and then three to the right that is the manual test mode and that's how you get to the manual test mode once you get on test mode you press one it will lock the door then if you uh, go one more it will test the cold water right there you press and it will be water filling in you go one more it will be the hot water then you go one more there's nothing if it flashes that means it's nothing there's nothing there's nothing there's nothing there's the drain now is draining sorry that it got that on the video because the customer was talking to me there's nothing and there's the spin cycle you don't have to do this test because you know it's your own washer or whatever but just put a load and you will see that it will not shake anymore at this point we're pretty much done if this video helped you in any way please give us a thumbs up subscribe to our channel and i see you on the next video